Hi, I'm Blake Shannon. I'm the Irrigation and Soils Farm Advisor with the University of California Cooperative Extension in Kern County. And I'm David Dahl, Pomology Farm Advisor, also with the UC Cooperative Extension in Merced County. And today I'm representing you, the grower. And we're here to show you how to collect representative soil samples so that you can interpret and understand lab reports and make good decisions about managing your crop production needs. The first thing I need to know, where can I go to find a reliable lab to analyze my soil samples? You can ask your neighbors what soil testing labs they use. You can contact the UC Extension office in your county and ask for assistance, or you can search for local labs on the web. Once you have identified a lab, email or call them and ask them to send you information about their sampling procedures and submission forms. You might find this information on their website. Next, and this is really important, ask if they participate in an independent quality assurance program and if they will supply you with their results. And finally, ask the lab how they want the samples prepared and submitted to make sure you get the best results. So how do I go about collecting representative samples? You need to determine appropriate sampling zones. County soil maps are used to help define regional variations in soil textural classifications. You can also find these maps on the web at the UC's Soil to Go website out of Kearney or the USDA Natural Resources Conservation Service Web Soil Survey. You should plan to take separate samples from different soil types based on texture, color, uh, also distinct crop growth response areas, and any areas that have received differential soil treatments. Aerial images of grain or hay crops can be really helpful in identifying these different zones. Typically, you want samples from at least every 40-acre block. What about field borders and small low-lying bellies or alkali hotspots within the field? Avoid these areas unless they represent a large acreage that you can actually correct. Sample so-called problem areas like poor drainage, poor plant growth response, and good areas separately for comparison purposes. You should take surface and subsoil samples. If the terrain varies, sample bottomland and upslope areas separately. So do you have any questions about determining the sample area? What do you mean by soil type and textural classification? This has to do with the percentage of different soil particle sizes. We break them down into three categories, sand, silt, and clays. Then this also refers to the parent material the soil came from and the native salts in the soil. All right, um, what about sampling from the head end or the tail end of the field? Great question. If visual inspection of the field and or aerial photos uh, you've got show growth differences between these areas, then the head and the tail of the field need to be sampled as separate zones. What's the best time of year to take soil samples? You can take samples at any time of the year, but fall sampling usually allows for more time to adjust amendment and fertilizer applications for the coming season. This will also indicate the maximum concentration of salts since you just finished the previous irrigation season. Once you've addressed any problems, then the important thing for repeated sampling is to be consistent from year to year, both with the time and the testing lab. Well, how often should I sample? I like to do soil samples once a year during the first couple years of a new planting. Mid-season tissue sampling is also very important then to come in and fine-tune your recommendations, but that's another topic. Once soil structural, fertility, and salinity baselines for your orchard have been established, then sampling every two to three years is sufficient. So what type of tools do I need to take a good sample? Well. They're over here. Let's go take a look.